Hi, welcome back to Linux. We're going to look at Linux and Unix file permissions today. The basics are really simple in Unix. We have three permissions, read, write, and execute. The only three objects that you have to worry about are user, group, and other. Now we can say all, meaning everything, user, group, and other, but everything we're concerned with here is user, group, or other and symbolically represented by U, G, and O. So two basic things we need to know. Who owns the file or directory? And what are the permissions for the owner and the group? Now we talk about symbolic versus numeric syntax. We're talking about using letters, that U, G, and O, versus numbers. In Unix, you can use numbers to assign permissions. We'll get into details on that in just a few seconds. Uh, by the way, directories need the execute right assigned to them in order for us to traverse into them. So if you don't have the execute right on a directory, you can't get into it. If you don't have the read right on a directory, then you can't read the files when you get into the directory. So if you give a directory only the execute right, you can get into it, but then you can't see any of the files inside of it. If a directory only has the read write and not the execute, you cannot access the directory at all. So we need both read and execute to get into a directory and then see the files inside of it. Scripts and binary files should have the execute write assigned to allow execution. That's why it exists. Executing a script or a binary from within your current directory, and this is your current working directory, you must specify it with a dot slash. So if you're in a, your current directory context, it has to have a dot slash in front of it. That keeps hackers or anyone writing malware from putting something like ls in your home directory and then having you mistakenly execute it. We're not going to use many commands today in the exercises. We'll use make directory, you're familiar with that, cd, touch, echo, and then the two new commands, chone and chmod. So change ownership, chone, and chmod, which is change mode. That's actually permissions. Anytime we see a dash, for instance right here, in front of our permissions, that means it's a file. If we have a D in front of the permissions, that means it's a directory. In this case, this file is dash, indicating it's a file, and then read, write, execute, read, write, execute, and read nothing execute. You can see the owner is p potete, and the group is also p potete. In Linux, every time you create a new user account, it does create an equal group to the user account. So if you create a new user account called student, then a group called student is immediately created, and student is assigned to student as the primary group. It's just the group is the same as your username to keep you from accidentally sharing some of your files. And we can see when this file was created, today, at what time, and then what the file is. The D directory, we can see right there with the D. We have read, write, execute, read, write, execute, and read, write, T. Now we won't get into T right uh, just this moment, anything like sticky bits or other special permissions. But it is also a read, write, execute for anybody to get into that directory. And it's owned by the user group root and the group root. And that's the temp directory. So when we talk about permissions, we have three different objects. We have user, group, and other. The user can have read, write, or execute to a file. The group can have read, write, or execute to a file and others. That means anyone who is not the user or anyone who is not the group can have read, write, and execute permissions to the file. The read permission is assigned a numerical value of 4. This is based off octal, but we won't worry about that. The numerical value of 4 is assigned to read, 2 is assigned to write, and 1 is assigned to execute. We can imagine that a numerical value of 0 would indicate no writes, and if we add these up, 4 plus 2 plus 1, 7, 
that means you have all rights. So if we had permissions such as 777, then that means that the user, group, and other all have read, write, execute, read, write, execute, and read, write, execute. If we had this 4 plus 1, which is 5, so let's give the user 7, and then the group 4 plus 1, and other 4 plus 1, or read plus execute, and read plus execute. That would be 7, 5, 5, or read, write, execute, read, execute, which put a dash there, and read, execute. Once again, it's always in the order of user, group, and other. Now let's look at some commands. If we want to change commands, if, I'm sorry, if we want to change permissions, we'll use the chmod, change the mode of a file. So if we type chmod, user plus, and I'll say read, write, then that changes the user permission and adds read, write to them for file.txt. If we type chmod, user equals write file.txt, that sets the permissions equal to write for the user. If we type chmod, oh, let's do user minus write, that subtracts the write permission for a file. If we want to do this numerically, then we can set the user, group, and other all at the same time, which we'll do that with symbolic too, chmod, and we'll set UGO. For instance, here we can say chmod UGO plus read write file.txt. That gives the user, group, and other read and write permissions to file.txt. It ignores whatever permissions they currently have and adds read and write to them. So if we're going to do this numerically, we could type chmod sorry, <laughs> numerically, we're going to go ahead and add read and write. So that would be, we're going to change it to read and write. 666, file.txt. Now user, group, and other have 6, which is 4 plus 2, or read and write. If we wanted to mod this to 664, file.txt, then that gives the user read and write, the group read and write, but everyone else only read permissions. When I create a file, I'll use chmod to set the permissions. If I'm going into a file system and I need to modify permissions, I'll often use chmod symbolic to change the permissions. So chmod numeric, whenever I set the permissions, and chmod symbolic, when I want to go in and change permissions. That's how it works. And uh, we'll have a little exercise in class where we'll walk through some of the uh, creating directories and changing their permissions. But that's all there is to it for chmodding files. Now, if we want a different user to have ownership, we type chone. If the file, as referenced here, we want to change this to student, then we can type this, oh, where is it? Chone student file.txt. If we want to change the user and group, we can type chone student dot student file.txt. That'll change the ownership. If we want to change the group only, we can actually do that through chion, but we can also use chgroup. Chgroup student file.txt allows us a shortcut for choning just the group. If we wanted to use chone, then we can simply type chone.student file.txt. It may look a little strange putting the dot there, but we're just not changing the user in this case, and we're just changing the group. Whereas, remember, it's user.group. And that's it for chone. So now we've covered chmod and chone. We also looked at ch group for a second, and uh, that's how we change the user permissions and the user owner, the group or uh, user ownership of a file. I hope that this helped, and I hope that you have a great day.